Welcome back to New Rock Stars. This is the big question, the show that gives you too much information about how everyone's favorite web slinger might rot in prison. Lock him up. Lock him all up. No. <laughs> No, no, oh, no, not my Peter, not my Peter. The, the news I watch tells me that it's confirmed that there's some stuff on his laptop. They don't tell me what it is, uh, but. Now I've heard that you can't trust the media ever about Peter Parker. When it comes to Spider-Man, you can only get it straight from the source. I'm talking, it's either Joe Hap, Rogan. Yeah, okay. yeah, Joe Rogan, <laughs> Aunt May, uh, and maybe you can trust Flash Thompson. <laughs> His Instagram has all the big scoops. That's well, right. I'm Eric Voss. Here with me today is, I just learned, birthday boy, Tommy Bechtold. Happy yes. birthday, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. What a what a time to be alive. As much as I'd love to not count this entire year towards my tally. <laughs> Thus, the calendar will not lie, and I've turned another year older. So thank you. Thank you. It might feel like you are five years older than you were last year, but yes. you're one year older, and we're happy that you spent it with us. What a great year Thank it's you. been because you've what been What an amazing year. What a, what a great opportunity to meet new people digitally. And I, <laughs> I truly, genuinely do mean that, despite how sarcastic that sounded. Hey, that's the, that's the only way it's happening right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, it's, a, it's an exciting time for a lot of reasons, but yes. one big reason is the third MCU Spider-Man film has been filming in New York in recent weeks. Uh, and the big question coming out of Far From Home was, wait a minute, is uh, Peter Parker going to jail? Mm. What charges are they going to try to stick to the stickiest stick boy the MCU? Ooh. Yeah, they got to get him. They got to get him. He needs to go down. So let me let me ask you, Eric. This is my question. How much damage could Spider-Man be legally responsible for? <laughs> oh, this is, I, I love this question. Yeah. We, we do talk about this all the time behind the scenes. Uh, it actually comes to us recently from our Discord pal, Unpantel alone who asked specifically what would happen if Peter went to trial for ah. murdering Mysterio. And what's interesting about this is the public narrative. What exactly does the common folk think about Peter Parker right now? Mm. Because it seems like society believes all the monsters that they saw in Mexico, Venice, Prague, London were legit attacks that Mysterio mm. was trying to stop until right. that dumbass Spider-Man murdered him saying Master. execute them all. Are you sure you want to commence the drone attack? Ex Execute order 66. It's not clear to totally what the public knows, but it seems like people think that those drone strikes were operated and controlled by Peter Parker trying to steal it from his mentor, Tony Stark. Those are not great optics for him. Gotta be honest. Do it. Execute them all. <gasps> oh! Great Odin's Raven. So using that, now we can try to think about what the world's district attorneys and barristers and lawyers, yes. courtrooms around the world would try to put on Peter Parker, starting with the charge of murder. Ah. So uh, Quentin Beck died on Tower Bridge. That is if he died. Uh, we're assuming he's died. dead for this yeah. uh, episode. And Tower Bridge is within the jurisdiction of the United Kingdom, which is interesting because it, they have a completely different legal code there even though common law american common law is based on english common law it's it, there have similar legal traditions but in cases of murder in the uk youth youths under the age of 17 would be tried in what's called crown court but the sentencing guidelines tend to be generally protective of the perpetrator's youth and immaturity the same way they are in the united states so there's usually mm. he may not be tried as an adult they kind of look at obviously case by case uh, the severity of the crime now there is an argument to be made based on peter's birth records that he should True. maybe be in his early 20s True. because of the blip, right? right? Good point. They tell us August 4th is the birthday. We haven't seen any proof of it. But in Far From Home, that argument didn't stick for Flash when he was trying to drink booze on the plane. Oh, so true. I, I don't think it would hold up in court. Uh, but I admire Flash's ingenuity <laughs> there. Brilliant. Smart man. I'd be doing everything. If I was like 21 when the blip happened, I'd be trying to rent a car. Yeah. I'd be getting kicked <laughs> off my parents' health insurance, all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I heard they recently decided to add more hops. It. The problem is for Peter, however the UK decides to try him, his actions might not be limited to murder, uh -huh. but would probably be linked to all the terroristic attacks mm -hmm. on Tower Bridge, the Tower of London, and then other parts of Europe, Prague, uh, the Venice Grand Canal. And in such a case, I think Peter could face a trial for war crimes in the Ooh. International Criminal Court at The Hague. Since its founding in 2002, the ICC has convicted and sentenced a handful of war criminals like the Congolese warlord Thomas Lubanga, 
who was sentenced to 14 years in prison. Mm. Islamic militant Ahmad al Fakwi al Mahid, mm. probably saying that wrong, uh, was sentenced by the ICC to nine years for destroying religious and historic monuments in Mali, mm. which is interesting to point out because a lot of Peter's crimes are like <laughs> property damage. He, of he takes a lot of monuments, monuments down for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we'll explore this deeper, but I do think it's likely that the U S would form an agreement with some of these other countries mm. to indict Peter under general war crime charges under the Sokovia Accords, mm. which various Marvel filmmakers have recently reminded us are still in effect in the MCU. Mm. So let's move on from murder to the property damage. We'll, we'll take off our, our barrister wigs and put on our uh, insurance adjuster caps. Right, here. chat, we're all done with the murder investigations. Now let's take a look at all these buildings that have been bombarded. So included in whatever indictment was put on Peter Parker would almost certainly be the various cases of property damage. And Peter, mm -hmm. even if he is able to get out from the criminal uh, charges, he could face some civil suits. So mm. let's try to put some uh, a price tag on each of these, starting with uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, the Staten Island Ferry. <laughs> yes, in half. <laughs> a lot of New Yorkers count on using that ferry to get to and from work yeah. every day. Right. And for him to sever it in half, yeah. make it inoperable, so many cars sunk into that Hudson yeah. covering bodies that still need to be discovered from the mafia that buried them there never going to be found no. thanks to Peter Parker I looked up uh, those current ferries there's a whole bunch of them there's like a fleet of them the numbers I was able to find for some of the more recent boats is around 16 and a half million each to construct them uh, down at a shipyard in New Orleans the ferry itself brings in an estimated six million dollars of annual revenue to the city hmm. so if one of its seven boats was destroyed that's about $160,000 in lost revenue oh. for one boat. Plus, each boat carries about 30 cars, and a lot of those cars sunk into the river. If you average about $25,000 per car, that could be about $750,000. So not including the rescue salvage cleanup, we're just going to round the cost of that incident to $18 million. Not an insignificant amount of money, Eric. And let's just hope that everyone had insurance, including Spider-Man. All right, let's move on to the Washington Monument. I will say Peter didn't do too much damage other than, you know, there's a broken window. The elevator seemed pretty toast. But as a 135-year-old national monument, it's pricey to restore those things. You can't just bring in some contractor off the street. He's like, yeah, I can get some chalk in there. <laughs> like, you, you, you got to get like a uh, Precious historians are like, mm, careful, the right. limestone is ancient. Right. In 2011, there was an earthquake. Uh, there's been a couple of earthquakes, but in, after the 2011 one, there was a, a billionaire who paid $7.5 million of his own money to repair the monument and another $3 million to fix the elevator. So just using those numbers for the damage that was probably done to it, Spider-Man Homecoming, we got $10.5 million. Le and lesson, as always, rich people will do anything to avoid having to help poor people. We will just go <laughs> ahead and divert 7.5 mil to repairing the Washington Monument. Meanwhile, yeah. uh, never mind, too political, sorry. It's a, it's a tax write-off, yeah. you know? Yeah. You get uh, you get to pay less taxes. Yeah, he's absolutely. just playing the system, man. He's smart. It makes him smart. Absolutely. He's gaming the system. He's playing 5D chess. <laughs> All right, moving on to Spider-Man Far From Home, Tower Bridge in London. So initial construction of the bridge in 1887 cost 1 1.2 million pounds, mm. which is about... Uh, 136 million pounds today Whoa. and in 2008 it got a little facelift that cost uh four million pounds mm. so watching that movie the drone destruction wasn't too severe it looked like most of the damage was to the vehicles on the bridge but there was some heat damage some explosion blasts that took out you know certain uh edifices the structure there's sure. definitely structure damage and i would say it's at least double of what that 2008 restoration did yeah i would say plus Plus all the vehicles damaged on the bridge, you know, rounding up and then converting it to U.S. dollars. We got about about ten and a half million dollars of damage to that one. Ten point well. five million. Mm. Wonderful. Not total destruction, but uh, sizable. Yeah, but pretty pretty um, devastating. But that wasn't the only landmark that was attacked in that battle. Mm. The Tower of London, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, one of my favorite places in the world yes. that I've been to several times. A few of the drones damaged suits of armor and medieval weaponry mm. in the armory of the Tower of London. That stuff is priceless. It's like treasured items. A lot of it belonged to different monarchs, some of those suits mm. of armor. And they're cultural relics, but I would say they're not necessarily destroyed 
destroyed. We didn't mm. see armor melting. They're just kind of knocked on the ground and stuff. But it would cost a lot of money to restore them based off of restoration costs. Uh, and a lot of those numbers are inflated. But we're going to give about $250,000 to restore all that, that stuff. That seems fair. Now, let's just hope that yeah. the uh, secret bar in the Tower of London was not harmed, which is a legend that every time I've asked a guard at the Tower of London to tell me about, they not only deny, they deny with such frustration and anger because I'm sure they're sick of it. Like, because it's like a yeah. tourist rumor that there's a bar in there. And I feel like if there was at this point, someone would have been nice because I've asked 500 employees of the Tower of London and they're like, it's not true. There's not one here. Leave us alone, please. You know what you got to do is ask the six ravens that are always yes. on site because yes. they know where it is. Quoth the raven, the bar is down there. All right, let's move on to Prague. So there was a city block of Prague that was pretty messed up mm. in that movie. The Ferris wheel, the fountain. Construction costs for smaller Ferris wheels tend to clock in around $3 million. Mm. But there was a lot of fire impact damage to the to that fountain there, the city streets, buildings, cars. We're going to price it around $9 million mm. in damage. Images. The real price tag comes in the Venice Grand Canal. So Oof. here's the deal with Venice. Flooding in Venice is a huge existential problem to that city. Yes. There was a recent flooding in November 2019 that caused a ton of architectural damage that uh, the city mayor estimated to be higher than $1.1 billion with a B. Uh, there's constant reconstruction efforts to try to keep buildings floating as they uh, race to repair them. It's, it's a huge problem. Now, if you watch that scene, the Hydra monster caused insane levels of flooding around the city. Buildings were crumbling, but really that flooding was quick. It was about 15 minutes mm. or so soon after the water subsided. I still think it's safe to say a freak tidal shift like that. You know, a lot yeah. of tsunamis are very quick as well. They just kind of, they waves, they pass through and they destroy everything in their wake. Right. I would say 10% of the flooding damage from last year. So let's price it at 100 million, okay. which would be a safe estimate to what Mysterio's drones were doing. Absolutely. And if anyone got any of that water on or around or inside of them, their medical bills will be around 100 million as well because yeah. that water is disgusting. <laughs> and you know, that's the thing. With all these numbers, we're just talking about uh, structural damage. We're not talking about healthcare costs Yo. that have uh, cost as a result of trauma or injury, you know, all kinds of stuff that people could have been hurt by. Speaking of trauma, I'd like to add the one time I went to Venice was uh, 15 <laughs> years ago when I was even bigger than I am now. And I was wearing my leather jacket and little kids, little Italian kids were taking pictures of me and yelling giant following me around and yelling, giant, oh, no. giant, giant, giant. And uh, so I felt like a little bit of a celebrity there, but uh, it- uh, You should have scared them away. I you said someday a hydro monster is gonna ah. take this city down. <laughs> yeah, I should have I should have just started throwing them into the canal. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry that happened to you, Tommy, but you're so well-traveled. Thank you, thank you, yes. I've been overseas before. We are international businessmen. Yeah, yes. baby. <laughs> now the last town that was destroyed and far from home was Extenco, Mexico. Mexico. Mm. That was the the first uh, city in the prologue. Yes. Um, it's a very small town, 5,600 residents, very old town, founded in 1532. The damage looks pretty severe. Uh, and like Venice, that city's old. You know, any kind of restructuring is going to take a lot of time and mm. a lot of careful construction. But it's a much smaller city. We're going to use the ratio from what we paid for the Venice restoration costs based on the comparative size of Extinco Mexico, priced at around $2 million in damage there. Mm. So those are the big ones. Luckily for Peter, his webbing dissolves relatively quickly. We're not going to hold him for any of his webbing damage across New York. There's a whole other conversation we could have about what his webbing dissolves into. Is it a liquid? Ah. Is it a gas? What kind of environmental impact does that have? Uh, but this isn't Ghostbusters. These men yes. do have dicks. We're not going to have that conversation. <laughs> but that brings us, at least for this conversation, to at least total property damage that Peter Parker is responsible for. $150,250,000. Ooh, that is a lot. Can Aunt May help? No. We may need to set up a GoFundMe for him after this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's quickly run through a couple other crimes uh, that we might try to stick to him. Right. First off, trespassing, obviously. In Spider-Man Homecoming, Peter trespassed into residents' backyards and swimming pools in the New York suburbs. He's always on roofs and scaffolds in the New York area. You're not allowed to do that. No. I think it's illegal to go to some of those places. Absolutely. Peter trespassed into a DODC truck and then a storage facility in Washington, D.C. That's probably a federal crime that he committed there. And then far from 
home, he hitchhiked a train from Prague to Berlin without paying. And then uh, he did the same from Berlin to the Netherlands without paying fare. It's not necessarily trespassing, right? Uh, mm. What's the crime there? It's theft, uh, stealing a, for, a train If you don't seat? pay your fare, there is a, there's a term for it, right? It's, um, you know what, John, just edit me in with your voice. I'll move my lips. It's, he needs some milk. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's interesting, whatever this crime was, is uh, what got Peter eventually arrested in the Netherlands, and he escaped from that prison, which would bring up prison escape as a crime, but, 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 fun fact, real fun fact, while prison escape is illegal in the US, punishable on top of whatever other crime you committed to get in prison, prison escape itself is not illegal in Mexico, Sweden, Belgium, huh. Austria, Germany, and the Netherlands. Huh. So that's why Peter was allowed to get away with that. If you are caught, yes, you still have to go back in those countries, but they cannot add time to your sentence just for trying to escape because their legal philosophy is that it is human nature to want to escape. Wow. Imagine Isn't that. Isn't that cool? Yes. Now yeah. I know to commit all my crimes in Mexico, Sweden, Belgium, Austria, Germany, and coming to your city soon, Netherlands. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about truancy. So Peter skips school a lot. Mm. And in the state of New York, kids ages 6 through 16 must attend school full time. Ah. If they skip, they are liable to school disciplinary action. But in serious cases, they could end up in juvie. Oh, yeah. But I would say considering Peter's academic status on the decathlon team, I doubt his truancy is that yeah. much of a problem. He, yeah. He's pretty good about waiting out the clock and then going off to be Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. But the one Peter has to worry about is the thing that I believe got OJ eventually arrested. Yes. Unlawful detainment. So mm -hmm. Peter webs up people that he doesn't necessarily have to, which could lead to charges like assault, kidnapping, unlawful detainment. Now, New York law does allow for what's called a citizen's arrest in which a private person can use physical, but not deadly, just physical force to arrest someone if they reasonably believe the person has committed an offense, but... In addition to that, that person has to have actually committed the offense. So mm. when he webbed up Aaron Davis's hand to the back of the car, Aaron Davis was wanted for specific charges. That would have been an okay citizen's arrest. But that one dude just trying to get into his own car, what Peter did was illegal. It's my car, dumbass. Hey, shut that up. I was just trying to- my car. And ah. not only that, at the end of the day, he probably would have gotten sued by both people because he could sue mm. anyone in this country. It's an infringement on your constitutional rights. It's outrageous, <laughs> egregious, preposterous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on to our conviction in sentencing. I've heard enough. Bang, bang, bang. Enough. <laughs> this brings us back to the Sokovia Accords, which are, again, still in effect. These are specific to the MCU. And I think Peter could be convicted for unauthorized use of superheroic actions at the very least. Like, from the moment he returned from Berlin in Spider-Man Homecoming, everything Peter does in Washington, D.C., with the Staten Island Ferry, when he engaged Vulture on Stark's jet that crashed on Coney Island Beach, these are all violations of the Accords, mm. which are, you know, disputed, but like yep. still punishable. They're the law of the land right now. Law of all the lands. Peter joined Tony Stark and Bruce Banner, Doctor Strange, as they confronted the Black Order in the park and Infinity War. A lot of trees got damaged there, right. Tommy. And, and as we know from Groot, those trees could be alive. Those trees can think and they have souls. They could be sassy teenagers for all we know. And yeah, coming back to his heroics in Venice, Prague, London, even if they are heroics in public's mind, they all occur outside the purview of any government authority. Nick Fury wasn't working for Thunderbolt Ross there. So even if Peter is exonerated of killing Quentin Beck, he has still inserted himself in Avengers level threats without authorization. So Peter Parker could very well be detained in the Raft prison, as we saw half the Avengers in, ah. in Civil War. And yes. Clint Barton, Sam Wilson, Scott Lang, they were detained despite not being physiologically enhanced. They needed their gear to be superheroes. Mm. Peter Parker, even without a suit, is still a threat. That's right. He has his Peter tingles. So we will see, I believe, in the opening act of Spider-Man 3, we're going to see these legal troubles haunting Peter Parker. And yeah, Ooh. our man could go to jail. What the Ooh, I hope not. He's such a sweet boy. He's a menace. He's a no, no, no. Just give him Here's a chance. A Just give him no. a chance. No. Get to know him. All right, I, I got to walk off this steam. I'll be right back, Tommy. Okay, just settle down, Eric, but take all the time you need. Goodbye, Eric. Take care. Goodbye. Now that he's gone, let's talk business. I've been saying 
for years. The thing that this channel needs is a little bit of a Tommy takeover, and it seems as though the powers that be have left the driver's seat open, and I'm sliding in. So, starting very soon, I am going to have a dedicated time where I can take over and run this channel how I see fit. Now, I'm not capable of deciding things on my own. I'm very much a follower. When I was in high school, I dressed exactly like my friends, and some days they just wore burlap sacks, okay? I was a sack boy in high school, so what I need from you is suggestions of how to shape this show. What do you want to see from me? What do you want? You want me to break down which Ghostbuster was the horniest? I'll do it. You want me to break down uh, greatest water slides in America? I'll do that. You need to communicate with me, whether it's on Discord or tweet at me or find me on Instagram. We can talk about this and let's shape this take over together and if things go right by next year new rock stars will simply just be called the tommy b experience yeah baby what what were you saying to them nothing nothing eric i'm so glad you blew off your steam absolutely nothing happened while you were gone all right because uh, i didn't even take the time to flush that floater over there <laughs> oh, boy. i just heard your voice and i, can I said i gotta intervene i can smell it through the screen mm. it's just a bucket that's all philip gave me in the dungeon <laughs> philip well well, F Philip's gonna have to clean this spill up. I was gonna say that bucket's living up to his namesake. It's a fill up <laughs> situation. It's a bucket bucket. <laughs> In Florida, we call it a Buffett bucket. Yeah, but that's yeah. because you bring it to Jimmy Buffett concerts. Oh, you take a squat. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> because you don't want to miss cheeseburgers. And no, Paris. God, if you miss one of his two famous songs, what was the point? <laughs> as long as he plays get drunk and screw oh boy <laughs> all right uh moving on to some people who helped us make this episode yes. starting with our friends at expressvpn tommy have you seen the social dilemma documentary on netflix i did the feel good hit of the year i went out and bought both of my <laughs> daughter's cell phones and encouraged them to get on facebook immediately <laughs> oh you took the wrong message away uh, from this it just all seems so glamorous to me oh man i would love to have uh pete campbell from <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mad men four of them inside my body deciding what i get to see yeah hell yeah is that what it is they were inside the body they were inside the app i didn't yeah. understand so. but it did scare the hell out of me it is so good it explains how social media is engineered to exploit users data for profit yeah. they call it surveillance capitalism yeah. i do not want my data being harvested so that tech billionaires can get even richer no. that's why i put a layer of protection around my data with express vpn so every time you use the internet big tech companies mine your data by tracking your searches your messages your videos Video history, but when you run ExpressVPN on your device, it hides your IP address, which websites can use to personally identify you. That makes your activity even more difficult to trace or to try to sell to advertisers. So you still need to be careful with what you share on social media. Obviously, mm. obviously, Tommy. Yeah, stop I don't your share a lot. Uh, just <laughs> daily workout updates and uh, my internet passwords. Okay, well, you know, you could just uh, take those sticky notes off your uh, laptop. You shouldn't be having all your passwords on a sticky note by your computer anyway. That's a good point. But here's the deal, folks. ExpressVPN can make your web browsing more anonymous. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your internet data to keep you safe from hackers and all kinds of prying eyes. Many VPNs slow down your internet, but not ExpressVPN. It's incredibly fast and easy to use. Just tap one button and you are protected. So if you don't like the idea of tech companies exploiting your personal information, then visit expressvpn.com slash big Q right now. And there you can get three extra months of ExpressVPN for free. That is EXPRESSVPN.com slash big Q to protect your data. Go to ExpressVPN.com slash big Q to learn more. We also want to thank our friends at Acorn TV. It is yes. time to burst your domestic TV bubble and check out Acorn TV, a commercial free streaming service that is rooted in British television. It's home to top rated mysteries, addicting dramas, heartfelt comedies, and so much more. Acorn ah. TV is content from Ireland, Canada, Canada, Australia, Wonderful. New Zealand, Good. and beyond. That's right, Woo! I was going to do all those accents in a row for you. Do the accent for beyond. <laughs> beyond? Welcome to the internet. Oh, God. Oh, God. We went into Lovecraft Country. <laughs> but really, what I've enjoyed about Acorn TV is discovering a show I've never heard of with actors that I love, like the mm. directorists with Arnim oh. Zola himself, Toby Jones, and Mackenzie ah. Crook from the British office. Yes, and Game of Thrones. He warged into a, a hawk and never came back, right? Acorn TV. 
TV has lots of comedies and more murder mysteries than you can count. If you need to escape for a few hours with a charming detective with a great accent and a teacup, Acorn TV is your happy place. Plus, you can also play the How Many Game of Thrones Actors Can You Spot in This Episode game, which is really fun. They've also got the kind of charming low stakes reality shows that I love. Sometimes I just want to watch someone restore an 800 year old castle, yes. please. You can stream thousands of hours of great content on all your favorite devices for just $5.99 a month. Escape to Britain and beyond without leaving your seat. Try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use my promo code BIGQUESTION. That's A-C-O-R-N dot T-V code BIGQUESTION to get your first 30 days for free. Okay, and now comes the time for a bite-sized question that our man Tommy's gonna answer for us. You ready, Tommy? Yum, 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 yes. Cappy Kid on Discord, hey man, Cappy. asks, how does hyperspace in the Star Wars universe work? Interesting, light speed, hyperspace, as we know, is a very complex thing in Star Wars canon. Hyperspace ain't like Dustin Crops, boy. Entering hyperspace means to move faster than the speed of light. It's made possible by a hyperdrive motivator fueled with hypermatter particles, which are essential to the task, and it might be based on dark matter for us smarty pants oh, yeah. out there. The ship's uh -huh. inner computer automatically computes and charts out routes that ping the vessel across the galaxy at light speed until it reaches its destination in real space and I'm talking the real space none of this fake ass space okay therefore <laughs> a ship speed is a function of its computing technology the Millennium Falcon oh. heard of it can outrun lots of other ships because it has superior navigation computer that can chart out courses faster yeah. and more efficiently than other ships can it's also makes Lando very horny deep cut for those of you who didn't see Solo <laughs> so uh, there's your answer double K these quantum computers they ha it's kind of like in dune right mm -hmm. the only reason they can do interstellar travel is because they have these like spice coked up things yes. that can uh, quickly quantify the calculations yes. and star wars they have their their navigation computers do that right and i wouldn't be shocked if the computers were on coke they're just <laughs> so fast and so up tempo and they're always trying to get me to start a business with them any problem is solvable because we live in the matrix all right, Tommy, great job. And we move on to our box scraps. Box scraps. One more question here. Here is the box of scraps. It's a personal one. And feel free, I, I guess, to be as personal or vague as you want, Tommy. Sure. I think we've answered something like this on the show before. But sticking with the theme of what spider Man's going to go to jail for, what is the worst legal trouble that you have ever been in that you're willing to talk about? Sure. I'm trying to think of one that I haven't talked about on the show yeah, before. I, you know, I've got to say, uh, despite uh, my bad boy outside, I'm a pretty uh, rule-abiding, uh, law-abiding citizen. Uh -huh. I have been accused of, of stealing before and had the police show up at my parents' house. I could tell that one. I, I, I was torn between two. The one I won't tell is when I tried to use vampire rules to argue why I should be allowed to stay at a college overnight when I got caught drinking there, even because I didn't go to the <laughs> school. They tried to kick me out, but I said that since I had been invited into the school... I legally have rights to stay there. Uh, I think, yeah, and, that's Buffalo law. Yeah. And it absolutely worked on a like 21 year old RA. Did not work on the campus Whoa. police though. She was like, it makes sense. I just got to tell the, the police officer. So and then he, he said, no. Uh, the most trouble I have individually been in was my cousin Brian and I went to a gas station to buy beer. Uh, when we were both underage and I didn't, I had a fake ID, but it was really bad. He had a really good fake ID. So he went in to buy beer, but there was this guy there who just was watching it. It wasn't working at the store. He must have recognized him or something or knew him. Maybe he was some, some, one of our friend's dad, but we just didn't know. Mm -hmm. He was watching him. So my cousin got uncomfortable and left. Then... We drove away. He's like, Dude, that was no good. We drove away and went somewhere else and bought beer at another place. So like an hour later, my mom calls and says that they, they took my license plate down as I was leaving the parking lot and they called the police and they accused me and my cousin of stealing beer. So we now mm. had beer in our car that we had bought illegally from another place. 
And we were like, and we both had fake IDs on us, but we hadn't technically committed the crime they were accusing us of committing. So right, we were like, okay. I, like the uh, completely composed badass that I am, immediately threw my <laughs> fake ID theatrically out the window, never to be seen again. I just whipped it into <laughs> the wind. Uh, and then we took our beers and we hid them behind one of the neighbor's houses. Don't, don't be suspicious. Don't, don't be suspicious. Don't, don't be suspicious. Don't, don't be suspicious. And then we went to my house and spoke to the police officer. We talked to the cop and we're like, no, check the cameras. We didn't steal anything from that store. And the cop kind of was like, yeah, the guy has said he's absolutely sure that you put something, like talking to my cousin, you put some beer under your coat and left. It was very cold as it always is in upstate uh -huh. New York. So eventually it was like dropped so that they could look at the, they were like, we'll look at the security tapes. And if we find something, you guys are in way worse trouble for making us take these extra steps. Well, of course they looked at the footage and we hadn't stolen anything. So we got off of it. But as you can imagine, I think we were 18 or 17 at the time. We still got in lots of trouble with our parents. Like there's like, you can't, you can't walk away from that one without yeah. a little bit of a stain on you. So uh, the, I would say like legal trouble, that was pretty tame, but that was definitely my most intimate encounter with the police. And, unless we're talking about financial and then we can talk about all the speeding tickets that I've had and how, how, oh, so sure, how much yeah. time in court I've had to spend for that. But oh, in terms of yeah. like an actual crime, that was, that's about as bad as it gets for me. How about you, man? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm in the same boat when it comes to like uh speeding tickets, movie violations, stuff like that. I think yeah. I have an unpaid campus parking ticket, which I just think, Think is like you know it's like monopoly yeah. parking yeah. tickets that's you not, know? Those, those it, not a real place <laughs> campuses yeah you've already uh, stolen a, enough of my money that's right tuition what did i get from my money i i, I, I I think I, I got one of those right before I graduated. Uh, or, and I'm like, oh, God. But it hadn't been entered in the system, so it didn't affect me from getting my diploma. I still haven't Perfect. paid it. Well, I'll, I'll never pay it. I'll never go back there. I'll and then it. when I moved out to L.A., I did not update my license and registration in ah. California soon enough. And I got pulled over, and, like, they impounded my car, and yes. I had to go up here in court. It same. was a whole nightmare. Same, same. Just do it. That's my advice, too. Don't just learn from us. But I think the scariest thing that still gives me anxiety, even though I don't think it was legal trouble, when I was, like, eight... Uh, uh, my sister had this system uh, for how to sneak into a movie <laughs> at a movie Ooh. theater. Uh, and now I'm like working kind of in this industry. And ironically, it was for a Pixar movie. It was oh, for A Bug's Life. No. And I wanted to see it so bad. And and uh, now my lovely girlfriend works for Pixar. Yes, you owe them I'm $9. I'm so that like Pete Doctor is going to know. And yes. he's going to be like, you he's little like, shit. We looked up some Jacksonville yeah. film records and it, we, we have <laughs> footage of you walking into a bug's life at 2 just 30 little eight year old me who's yeah it's just like the bart simpson arrest tape yes. like oh my God. but the way it worked uh we, it didn't work at all like i honestly went to the movies that day thinking that i was just gonna go in and see a movie and pay mm -hmm. for whatever that six bucks was mm -hmm. to go see the movie there my sister's like no 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 just do what i say and she's like she goes up to the usher we need to go talk to customer relations and she's like okay go and then we waited for the usher to be distracted and then we like snuck past her i like we we went in and you know we sat i'm like why didn't we pay and she's like shut up shut up shut up and we sit there and we're watching that wonderful pixar opening short of jerry's game or gary's game where the guy's playing chess mm -hmm. with himself and and i'm just like enjoying it and i look over and that usher is in the aisle staring directly at yes. me my sister's like don't don't look at her just keep looking forward and i was like uh, i got so scared and then uh, eventually another usher comes and he's like hey can we see your ticket stubs and my sister without missing a beat goes we threw them away yes and brilliant. i was like uh -huh. and he's like can you come with me please and the manager was just like Shh, you know she says that you didn't yeah she remembers you and then the usher looked and pointed at me and she's like i remember him i remember his blonde hair <laughs> and i had bright blonde hair and i was like if i had only worn my hat <laughs> that would have avoided everything <laughs> and the whole drive home my sister was just mad she goes like oh, God. she's like well i'm sorry and i'm like i'm sorry it's my We're going fault to we got caught. <laughs> yeah oh my god how funny i i've only uh, snuck uh, into one movie in my entire life and it was the uh kelsey Grammer classic down periscope <laughs> 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 that's one that's like fair to sneak into because it's down periscope yeah, but pixar makes these beautiful yes. films that we should all be paying yes, for yes. especially now yes that, you know 
I have a reason to. Uh, uh, to its credit, though, yeah. when we went to, uh, I, I was able to see Onward early, and then I went back to the movie theater, and it was the last movie I saw before everything oh, shut down. So Pixar nice. has my money, and they Excellent. will have more and more of my money. I will see every movie in the theater twice that I can, because I love Perfect. those movies. <laughs> you're, 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 I think you've more than made up your karmic debt to Pete Doctor. Not according to my nightmares. <laughs> All right. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> I absolve you. I'll, I'll say I'll light a prayer candle for you tonight, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully I, neither of us will go to jail for confessing these crimes no. uh, on a public YouTube video. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. That is it for this episode of Big Question. Tommy, it's been great talking about um, Always a pleasure with you today. And, and, <laughs> and I'm just glad that while you went up and walked away and blew off some steam, absolutely nothing happened here. And there's nothing that anyone should worry about. Well, I never watch these videos back, so I'm just going to take you for your word. Great. That's smart. <laughs> well, follow me at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars, and check out our new merch store. We have lots of amazing yes. options, including an exclusive This Is The Way shirt. A Hi, I'm Eric Voss yes. shirt. All kinds of great New Rockstars merch and other designs that you're going to want to check out. They got everything that you might love in there. It's like our own personal hot topic, but better. Uh, yes. And it will help support this channel. You know, that's, that's yeah. just something we're trying to, to give and you guys. And it looks amazing. I have to say, as yeah. a uh, cynical well, internet browser, I perused the entire store the other day, and they've got some sizes. They've got some baby doll tees that I'm going to be cramming myself into these holiday seasons. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, for future episodes of Big Question, send us your big questions using the hashtag Big Question. But really, you're going to want to become a patron so you can get into our Discord. That's where we check first for our Big Question submissions, mm -hmm. as we did this episode. Subscribe to the Big Question podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a nice rating review if you don't mind. Uh, subscribe to the new Rockstars, of course, here on YouTube. Hit that notification bell, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, shit, the cops are here. Oh, uh, God. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. It's that one usher from AMC in 1998. I, I don't have a fake ID. There is no Tom Idaho. She's got your ID, too. <laughs> no, it's the same no, no. Now that he's gone. I'm just kidding. Just joking. <laughs> what? Just joking. What is this? <laughs>